This is a bit of biology, and today we are talking about macroevolution. So before we begin this video, I wanted to say that microevolution drives macroevolution. So with that being said, if you have not watched the microevolution video yet, you should go back and do that. But macroevolution is the product of microevolution. So macro means big or large. So macroevolution then is going to be large scale evolutionary patterns or processes that occur over long periods of time. So we're talking about really big evolution events. We are talking about things like extinction, things like adaptive radiation, convergent evolution, co-evolution. These are really, really large scale evolutionary patterns that take a very, very long time and we can study them in evolution. So to begin, we're going to start with extinction. Extinction is when a species no longer exists on our planet, so that means it gets wiped out. And extinction, extinctions can happen for a lot of different reasons. Food chains can collapse. There could be increased competition uh, for a diminishing resource, or your environment changes. One thing that I need you to understand is that extinction is the product of not being able to adapt. So you go extinct as a species if you can't adapt to your new environments. Um, with that being said, we are currently in the sixth mass, mass extinction. So we're losing a lot of species right now, and it's because our environment is changing too quickly through climate change. So a lot of species cannot evolve to the changing climate, they're not adapting fast enough, and a lot of them are going extinct. So we're losing a lot of animal species, a lot of plant species, um, and we're never going to have them back on this earth. So it's kind of a dismal topic, but it's something that's currently happening in our world today. The next is adaptive radiation. This is a process of macroevolution by which a single species evolves into many different forms. So, if you look at Darwin's finches up here, this is the best example of that because I want you to picture that originally there was one type of finch and it got to the Galapagos. Genetic mutations happened and natural selection chose which beaks were going to be successful on which islands and there was one finch and it adapted to many different forms so many different versions this term adaptive radiation is very very similar to homologous structures where you have one at the beginning you have one type of mammal and then it evolves into many different kinds of animals that use their limbs for different functions so one thing I'd like to say to finish this off, adaptive radiation, it leads to a lot of diversity within, um, within the genus or within the group. So there's a lot of variation, a lot of genetic diversity that results from this. The next one, convergent evolution, is actually contrast adaptive radiation. So this is a process by which unrelated organisms begin to look really, really similar because they're in a similar environment. Convergent evolution is equal to analogous structures. So that's from Evidence of Evolution uh, Part 1. So you go back and see that video if you don't remember it. But this is where similar environments are producing similar adaptations. So we have the shark, we have the ichthyosaur, and we have the dolphin. The shark is a fish, the kithiosaur no longer exists, but it was a reptile, and then we have the dolphin, which is a mammal. And you could even throw penguins in here. All of these organisms look very, very, very similar. They have a streamlined hydrodynamic body, they have a back fin, they have uh, re water resistant, like, uh, they don't have thick fur, so their skin is pretty... Uh, resistant to water, so it makes them able to move swiftly through the water. So they all have similar features, but it's because they're in similar environments. So 
Similar environments are producing similar adaptations. So they all have a different family that they belong to, but they all look very, very same because they all live in the same type of water. So that is convergent evolution. And then finally, coevolution is a process by which two species evolve in response to one another. So this happens through ecological relationships. And if you don't remember what those are, two examples would be predator and prey and mutualism. So predator, prey, one person eats another, mutualism, it's good for both of you. So examples of this, we'll do predator and prey first. It's like the cheetah and the gazelle, if the cheetah becomes faster, the gazelle then needs to adapt or they're going to go extinct. So the fast gazelles are going to get passed on to the next generation. And then as a result, the cheetahs might be a little faster because they're able to eat the faster gazelle. So it's kind of a feedback. One evolves in response to the other. So then up here, we also have dogs, humans, bees, and flowers. Uh, with the bees and flowers, bees are able to collect pollen on the back part of their body and flowers produce nectar. So it could have been that flowers that don't produce nectar don't get to reproduce because bees don't come to them. And bees that don't have a furry coat around their backside don't pick up pollen and they don't get the nectar of the flowers. So one change happened. If a change happens in flowers, then eventually a change is going to happen in a bee because they rely on one another. That is coevolution. This has been a bit of biology with Mr. Rock signing off.